All right, guys, welcome back to PacWest Bigfoot. Guess what? I am going to have today's encounter story out on a Thursday. <laughs> Reason being, I'm actually going to be heading off to an invitation uh, to a uh, gathering called Beachfoot. So I'll be heading out there uh, this Friday, get to meet the likes and listen to the likes of people um, from Bob Gimlin to, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ron Moorhead. So I'm going to be able to... Uh, get out there and listen to all of them and and uh, take in a lot of uh, really awesome information um, about Bigfoot. So it's going to be really fun and a uh, real interesting time. Also, don't forget, guys, this month's giveaway. If you're not subscribed yet, it's PacWestBigfoot.com, PacWestBigfoot.com. You can get over there. This month I'm giving away an awesome book uh, by uh, uh, Gail Beatty and Deborah Ray called A Young Researcher's Guide to Bigfoot. And also I'm going to actually have two winners this month because somebody else is going to get an awesome t-shirt from my PacWestBigfoot.com. The uh, shop is open and uh, it is ready for you. Thank you guys so very much for jumping on me and getting on me to get some of these shirts and hats and coffee mugs and stuff that you wanted out here and available for you. Uh, they are there now. <clears throat> and I uh, just want to say thank you guys so much for just, you know, keeping everything going here and all of your kind words um, and everything. It's just been really awesome. So. Let's jump into today's uh, encounter story, and this one actually comes from a first-hand uh, uh, account to me, and uh, give me one second, let me take a sip of this awesome Sasquatch coffee. Mm. <clears throat> awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, real quick, on a side note, just want to give a shout out to... Um, uh, FolkloreSupply.com. You guys rock. Thank you so very much for just being there. And and also to the Southern Bigfoot Alliance. You guys out there are just awesome. So there you go. If you guys haven't seen any of their stuff or online or anything, take a look. Uh, they got a group uh, page on Facebook and everything's pretty awesome. So there you are. <clears throat> Clear throat and let's get going. Man and Woman Chased Out of the Woods by Bigfoot in Oregon. My wife and I love the Crater Lake area therein. Well, I guess you could say it is in the southern region of Oregon. Even after the fact, we were chased out of the woods there four years ago by a Bigfoot. Being from the big city, San Francisco, we have seen and even been in a few hair-raising situations. But being chased out of the woods by the largest, scariest-looking thing we've ever seen, well, that takes the cake. Here's our encounter, Dave, and yes, we might be up for an interview this fall, maybe. Crater Lake, here we come. We love Oregon. Everything about it screams us, even after this incident. My fiancé and I met seven years ago at work. We work for a couple high-profile attorneys here in the Bay Area. We started out as friends about two years ago. And between the passion for our jobs and the great outdoors, well, we found another passion, each other. No worries, I won't get too over-the-top romantic here. Our, uh, it was our passion for the outdoors that brought us together, and it gave us a chance to find the place we want to move to one day, Shady Cove, Oregon. I know it's one of those places you would never guess we might live, but to tell you the truth, we love small town life, and that is what we are saving up for currently. I want to run a fishing guide service, my fiancé wants to dive into professional photography. And the fact that Shady Cove is at the mouth of a national forest yet close to the much bigger city of Medford, it is perfect for us. We make a great living right now, and given a few more years, we will have the funds to get started. It was on a recent getaway up to our favorite little town that we would take a day trip, or hike if you will, and get the scare of our life from an animal we never thought existed, let alone heard little about before. Being city folk, raised here, yes, we have heard of Bigfoot or Sasquatch, but it was briefly, and it went in one ear and out the other for the both of us. But I will tell you this, I can't wait to move to Shady Cove and get some time out in the woods with some equipment for the fun of it. Of course, I believe that caution should be a key word here, as this encounter did get frighteningly real, and for the both of us. Chased out of the woods. 
As Legal Aid's research is the game and doing some of my own before we decided to hike around the Crater Lake area, well, we never ran across anyone in any travel guide or travel blog, for that matter, mentioned Bigfoot around the area. I guess perhaps I did not visit the right travel blogs about the, the area. Lady of the Woods was the trail we were on that early evening. We decided to take a quick hike, a simple hike, one that could, we could complete and still be back in town before it got completely dark. <clears throat> Looking on any map, you can see that the trail is less than a mile long. But the view is beautiful, and we wanted to know everything we could about our future home and the surrounding area. Besides, the chiseled woman in the rock was awesome to see, and the, ra uh, the trail, while short as I said, had some great views. There was a major section of the trail that was uh, the view consisted of forest, not too thick, but thick enough for us to have a problem seeing too far in. And just before we entered that section of the trail, that is when we heard someone paralleling us. We thought perhaps that there was some other trail, something that is not recorded, a locals only trail possibly that someone was hiking on at the moment. However, what caught our curiosity was the fact we could hear them walking and I mean we could hear footfall, heavy footfall. The forest uh, floor was rather dry that time of year. That is not the co This is not the coastal rainforest of the Pac West. This is a much more dry forest in the early summer. And by this time of the year, it's heavy with dry pine needles and such. We could hear the crutching of the pine needles underfoot, and occasionally a twig or small branch being broken. The heavy footfall was curious in the fact that it was very heavy, and knowing that black bear and mountain lion around these parts do not make that kind of noise, well, we decided to stop for a few and maybe get a visual of whatever or whomever it was. Mind you, this section of the trail is about, we were about 2.5, or I'm sorry, about 0.25 miles in. We stood there, must have been at least three to four minutes, as we whispered back and forth. But whatever it was, it stopped and moved off. We could no longer hear anything but the normal forest noises. And just so you know, Dave, I, we, do not remember any forest noises going silent at all. The birds, cicadas, and so on continued all the way through the experience. I say that because at night it seems to be different, uh, a different experience. But nothing gave us a warning about that thing being near or around us, period. <clears throat> no more walking, however. <clears throat> Whoever or whatever it was could not be heard anymore, so we hiked on. The Green Mile. <clears throat> Almost Mile. We reached the end of the trail, which gave us a rather cool view of the surrounding area. <clears throat> Not much, but enough for it to be worth the almost mile hike. However, this would be the turning point from great little hike to panic-stricken run, or fast-paced walk, for our lives. On a side note, I think this thing just wanted us out of the area. It was not, I feel, hunting us, not even close. After hanging out for a bit, we decided to head back down the trail and back to Shady Cove for the night. It was not even a minute into heading back when the heavy steps could be heard again. This time, they were on the opposite side of the trail, however, and closer. My wife and I stopped, started looking into the forest. Of course, it was darker back there, but we did make out something massive, dark, and looked like the upper torso of a large human being leaning out from a tree. I know it sounds pretty typical, but that is what we saw at first. It was completely motionless, as if it knew we were looking right at it. It was tall, at least seven feet or a bit more, and from what we could see, it was covered in dark fur hair. I thought for a moment that it was simply some person, a real tall and hairy person, but the massive size of the torso screamed something else. My wife looked at me, well, turned her head, keeping her eyes on the thing, and asked me what it was. I did not know, but what we did know was that it was something large and dark. This sent chills through my bones on a pretty warm day. We then decided to start walking and briskly back down the trail. It followed us. It literally moved closer to the trail itself behind us and kept a pace that seemed to keep a distance of about 40 to 50 feet behind us as we walked along. The trail was pretty wide, 
no real obstacles or hard parts about it, and that was good. At one point, my wife became a little tired and real thirsty, so we decided to stop for a moment. I looked around behind us as she sipped from her water bottle, and that is when I saw my first ever Bigfoot. I cannot believe it, but they are real. And there it was, alive and as present as my wife herself beside me that day. It was a dark cinnamon color. Not quite red, but not quite brown or black either. Just dark and almost a beautiful dark cinnamon color hair that seemed to flow in the breeze here and there underneath the arms. It was tall, like I said. The body, however, seemed almost hunched a bit, and there was no real visible neck, like some have said. It's like the head was just sat on the shoulders. The chest was massive, and my wife pointed out that she could see breasts on the thing. Looking again, there were, and they looked swollen. The Bigfoot was literally within fifty feet or so of us. It bared its teeth at us abruptly, and with intent, I believe. It did not seem to want to eat us or anything, but then again we were feeling threatened, as if we needed to leave, now. It wanted us gone. Real quick, the teeth were blocked, it looked like, however, my wife said she noticed some rather large canines as well. Not massive, but they could be seen by her. I did not notice, as my glasses were getting a little fogged up and dirty from the hike and heavy breathing. Charge. When they uh, want you gone, I believe that this is the reason for what some call the bluff charge, Bigfoot do. My wife made a move towards her backpack to put away the water and start our trek back again, and that is when, I think, this female thought we might be a threat as it made a quick charge at us. We backed up quickly, about five, six feet real fast, hearts pounding and adrenaline rushing. It stopped and made a terrible growl-like sound from its gut of guts. It almost ran all on all fours, we notice, not completely, but its hands would seem to hit the ground a bit. We started to briskly walk again, and this female Bigfoot kept following us. Just off the trail and just inside the trees, we could see the massive shadow. And from time to time, in the light of day between the trees, we could see her walking. The stride was long, and the way she walked was strange. But I noticed she kept to the forest floor that was covered in pine needles and never stepped out completely onto the trail itself. Maybe that is why it's so hard to find more tracks than people do. They avoid leaving them as much as, as much and as often as possible. But that is pure speculation. Growls, grunts, and old Maggie May. We were nearing three-fourths the way back when we kept hearing the footsteps get quicker, as well as grunts and growls. If you have never heard it before, you could compare it to, to a gorilla, I guess. But the growls, well, I could not compare that to anything, because there is nothing to compare it with. It is unique, deep, and guttural, but a menacing growl, and I swear you could feel it in your bones. My wife at that point was at a rather panic-stricken tipping point, and so was I, to tell you the truth. We kept calm, however, and tried to get a quick look as often as possible of her. She was menacing and scary to look at. With a heavy brow, you could still not see the eyes. They were nearly pitch black inside there. Her skin, well, it seemed to be a lighter shade than some reports of dark coal-like pigmentation. There was something about her face, though, that gave me the understanding later of why hunters and those that have seen them never shoot one. It seemed almost human-like. I'm not sure about that. It's just a best guess, too, but I can see why now. She never came close to the trail. She seemed to stay about the same distance away from us and the trail. Just enough, I think, to say, hey, I am here. Be warned. Ruh. Another grunt came as we finally reached the straightaway where the rock with the image of the Lady of the Woods was chiseled long ago. We could not get to the car fast enough, to be honest. But, like that movie The Green Mile, well, that last forty yards or so seemed to last forever. We wanted to run, but felt that was a bad idea. So, we kept the same pace as this thing still followed us just off the trail and inside the tree line. My last visual of her was amazing, and I could even see her chest moving as she breathed in and out. You could tell the lung capacity of these things were amazing. No wonder they could be heard from miles away. 
I swear I could hear her breathe, as close as she was, but just as I started getting lost in the thought of this awesome but terrifyingly large animal, my wife started to walk even faster as we finally came into view of our vehicle. I would come to learn in an hour or so that old Maggie May was a fixture around those parts. Red and His Tail Red was an old Native American man who lived just outside of Shady Cove. He was also a local fixture along the banks of the Rogue River. Fishing day in and day out, he was nearly 80 years old. We made it back to the store, the only grocery store in town, next to a fast food joint. Red was outside, standing there when we pulled up and got out of the car. We started talking about the event without a care in the world of who could hear us. We did not live there yet, so no worries, right? That is when Red came up and asked us to quiet down just a bit. He also said, I quote, and I quote, I hear you ran into the old Maggie May. The conversation turned into an evening of buying Red and ourselves enough beers to carry on a longer conversation across the road and down along the river bank. There were some researchers, he says, that know about her, but it's not safe to go poking around too much as the clan or group up there can be rather nasty and violent. They were to be left alone at all costs, he stated, over and over again. However, he treated them in conversation as if they were a highly intelligent animal, one that deserved its space and privacy to roam, and to live free of us. I could not have agreed, agreed more with old Red. That is what happened, and I'm not sure I want to have another encounter. But if we do, well, keeping calm and, level, and a level head was a right decision. Thanks, Deb and Remy.